For the first time in 2019, the NASCAR Pinty Series arrives in Quebec at the Autodrome Chaudière. Some drivers like the inside line, others the outside. Everybody wants to stay off the green monster. The True North, strong and fast, started out the season at a legendary world-class road course. Next up, Canada's finest took on the high banks of the five-eighths of a mile crown jewel, Jucasa Motor Speedway. Now, NASCAR comes to Quebec's fastest, raciest quarter mile. Carved out in the hills of Valley Junction, Quebec, Autodrome Chaudier is fast, aggressive, and has been the stage for many epic NASCAR short track battles. Welcome to Autodrome Chaudière and the Budweiser 300. We're in Valley Junction, Quebec at one of NASCAR's two Quebec home tracks. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross who's handling some trackside duties right now but will join us in a little bit. Todd Lewis will handle pit road duties for us here today. The big story, we've been dodging the rain here in Valley Junction pretty much all day long. In fact, NASCAR has moved up the race start time due to a storm that's presently making its way towards us. But well, we have 17 NASCAR late models ready to go in front of a packed grandstand, one of the biggest crowds of the season. And with two races in the books, Andrew Ranger holds a one-point lead over Kevin Lacroix in the Pinty Series Championship. Trois Viers LP Dumoulin, your 2018 champion, is in third. And Dumoulin Competition has brought in Raphael Lassard to handle duties in their sister Dodge here at Autodrome Chaudière. The 17-year-old is making waves in the U.S., makes his first start with the NASCAR Pinty Series here today. Here at the Budweiser 300, in fact, Valley Junction is home track to many of his supporters, and they're all here. Alex LeBay's home track is right here in a place where he's obtained a lot of success over the years and grabbed the E3 spark plug pole award in a time of 13.3 seconds. A good rebound from a disastrous outing last time out in round number two. Now let's go down to Adam with tonight's command. It's my privilege to introduce once again from Budweiser, Bernard Vachon. The engines come to life on a short front straightaway here in Autodrome Chaudière again. Just a quarter mile track built originally in 1992 was converted to pavement in 2005. Originally a dirt track pavement in 2005 and it is a very, very racy speedway. The field is lined up behind the 2019 Dodge Ram 2500 crew cab. Laramie Pace truck is there. You see a good look at TJ Rinomato running for the Justin's Rookie of the Year here in 2019. We'll ride on board with a number of drivers, including the three of Jason Hathaway as the field sets off here on the front chute. We'll take a look at your E3 spark plugs starting lineup. On pole is Alex LeVay, as we mentioned. LP Dumoulin, your defending series champion, starts alongside. Donald Teach in the 24 will make up inside of row two. Mark Antoine Cameron quick in the 22. To row three, Kevin Lacroix in the 74 alongside him. The youngster, Raphael Lassard in the 07. And a Ranger in the 27 alongside Alex Tagliani in the 18. Anthony Simone drives the number one. He'll start to the inside of row five. DJ Kennington in 10th here today. Jason Hathaway has his work cut out for him. He'll start in 11th and alongside Mark Dilley in the 64. Simone de Vienne starts 13th alongside Brent Taylor in the 46. Row number eight has Brandon White in the 04, TJ Renamato in the 02, and rounding out the field from Sun Peaks, British Columbia, Jason White in the 21. Nice little sprint up the stairs, Adam, and welcome to the booth here today. But if anything, we can be guaranteed of a great race on this tight little short track as we take a look at your E3 Spark Lux race analysis. 300 laps on this quarter mile oval, but really the race analysis, Dave, is 150 laps makes this race official. They've got to get to the halfway point for this race to count for points and payout. That's really the big picture. Do you race for 300? Do you race for 150? A couple of quick notes just before we go green. The 21 of Jason White after practice had to change a transmission. They missed qualifying, but they're good to go. They do have to start at the back. Also a milestone start for LP Dumoulin in the 47. This is his 100th NASCAR Pinty Series start. Two years ago here at Valley Junction, he finished third. Last year, he finished second. 
If form holds true, it could be a real night of celebration for number 100. Bernard Vachon with a green flag in hand. He waves it, and we are underway here at Autodrome Chaudière in the Budweiser 300. Already you see side-by-side -side racing. A lot of the drivers commenting, wondering how long it would take for that outside groove to really work in. Yeah, two storylines, Dave. The outside groove. And of course, we've talked about it all season, but the general tire, it's a new tire for everybody at this racetrack, and that also brings in a little bit of a learning curve. See contact, and that will be a familiar sight on this tight track, as the 27 of Andrew Ranger got together with the Pi GMC, number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. There is Raphael Lassard and the 07. He's done some testing, but he doesn't have a lot of laps behind this type of race car. He's been racing mainly in the U.S. Busy on the steering wheel is Rafael Lassard. One thing I noticed in today's practice, they only got 30 minutes of practice. He was the only driver I noticed really working the outside for at least two sessions. He focused on that high group. It's a smart move if you think about it because last year the 27 of Andrew Ranger worked in that high groove and it took him to a race win. You have to be good in different lanes to negotiate lap traffic. I mean, look at this. These are lead lap cars. There's four different lines being run by five different cars. A couple cars hungry to get to the front, including the Rona EpiPen Chevrolet, the 18 of Alex Tagliani, and the Kubota number three of Jason Halfway. Talk to both of their crews after practice. Both were shaking their heads. They didn't know what they had for a setup. They threw the kitchen sink at both those cars, hopefully changing things around. That's basically Team Ontario of the series battling with Alex Tagliani, with Hathaway, Kennington, and Mark Dilley. That is a lot of oval track experience. Yeah, Mark Dilley in the Leland Industries, number 64. Kennington, the Castrol Edge Dodge, up on the outside. Not afraid to mix it up in the early going. Well, I already noticed one thing you can see, even as fast as these cars are going, is who still has the letters on the outside of their tires. DJ Kennington has already rubbed up against something or someone because the white is completely gone off of those general tires. The driver that can conserve as much rubber and as many fenders on their race car is going to be better off as we get deep into this race as we have our first yellow flag of the day. Yeah, some debris reported by NASCAR, so that will slow the field as the leaders were working around the lap car of the 02 of TJ Rinomato. This is a tough track to really cut your teeth in oval stock car racing. You saw it's a piece of fender likely from the three of Jason Hathaway. So we'll take a quick break here in Valley Junction, Quebec. The third round of the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN is brought to you by Pinty's. Making great food fun. Mopar. We built it. We know it. And by Equipment LAV, the leading provider of construction rental equipment and sales services in Canada. LP Dumoulin is WeatherTech Dodge leads the Budweiser 300 as we get set for restart number one here at Valley Zone, Zone Quebec. NASCAR starter Dan Hawkins with the green flag in hand. It waves again, and we thunder off to turn number one. down the back straightaway with L.P. Dumla nosing ahead as they race into the corner. See how close they get to that front stretch wall off of turn number four. I saw a number of cars wiggling in practice and qualifying. As a matter of fact, Anthony Simone did brush the wall at one point, not really doing any damage other than scuffing the paint, but that's just how on the edge they are here. Well, and that's where I think the hometown favorites, Alex LeBay, Raphael Lazard, with the amount of experience they've got on this racetrack, they know exactly where that wall is. They don't have to gauge it as much with eye. They can race a lot by feel, Dave. There you see the bumper to bumper, number 74, Kevin Lacroix working on the back of the 24 of Donald Teach as Alex LeBay pokes the nose of the Ford Fusion underneath the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin. Let's run on board with LeBay. LeBay commits himself to the bottom of the racetrack and he hugs that yellow line better than anybody on the racetrack. And I'm not sure, again, we saw Andrew Ranger work the outside to a victory here before, but 
that you just see LeBay over and over again hitting the exact same marks. And look at Mark Dilly way up the banking in the NTN number 64. Gathers it back up. Almost made contact with the 17. He's right there with the Castro 37 of Simone Tionvien as well. Right behind them is Brad Taylor in the 46. He's having a nice run in that wing and a sponsored race car. Are you allowed to say defending Johnson's Rookie of the Year? Because it's not a title you defend, not but true. he did win it last year. Speaking of defending, the 0-4 is trying to defend his position, but Jason White is getting a little bumper happy in the Powder Ventures excavating. Dodge is he made contact, but a good save. There's definitely contact there. Brandon White needed the entire front stretch to gather that car. I love watching Andrew Ranger. Rafael Lassard, I'd love to know what's going through his mind. Ranger lives for having a driver run the inside of him, and he will keep him down there lap after lap after lap because you just can't get a run up off the corner. That's a battle for fifth spot as we look up just ahead of that with the 24 of Donald Teach and the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Again, Kevin comes into this one just one point back of Andrew Ranger for the series points lead. Little tap coming off the corner. And Donald Teach drove it hard into the next turn, so it had an effect by Kevin Lacroix. Teach just getting in his mind. Let's have another look. Just a touch. You can see a little bit of fiberglass breaking away on the Total Lubricants number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. But now look, as they battled side by side, the rest of that pack has caught them. And Kevin Lacroix is really learning the fine art of oval racing. He is a phenomenal road course racer, and he's becoming a phenomenal oval track racer just by learning those, the finer points. 64 of Mark Dilly in a tough battle there with a 37 of Simone Dion Vienne. A battle for 11 spot. You see more contact as Dion Vienne hangs on to it. And that team racing with a heavy heart here this weekend after the passing of a tire changer and mechanic. Bruno Dion was only 39 years old. He loved NASCAR and he would have loved to be here and we would have loved to have him. Yeah, so, such a sad affair. Side by side, back up in this battle for third spot. You have Lacroix on the inside trouble. of Teach. We do have trouble. It's DJ a 17. Pennington. He has a tire down, a right front tire down, and this will pull the caution here on lap 44. And this one's going to sting. It's right down to the rim. Well, in the trouble here, I'm not sure if he's lost a lap yet, but I don't know if you can get into the pits and change a tire here without losing a lap. The big problem is the right front. There's a little bit of body damage, but the crew gets the pry bar under the 17 car. Jack going up. They'll check that right front to see if there is any further damage as well as that flat tire. Another tough break for DJ Kennington. DJ Kennington known as a tough short track racer, but Edmonton and Chaudière, the two quarter mile tracks that we visit, LeBay, Dumoulin, and Hathaway have the best records. 2.6 average finish for Alex LeBay. That is insane, an 80% top five finish ratio. Those three are our quarter mile kings as we get set for restart number two. Again, 51 laps in the books, be 52 the next time we cross the stripe as the field bunches up. The Dodge Ram pace truck pulls to the pits, the green flag once again up, little contact on the front row. Little contact just about everywhere on that restart. And what you'll find, Dave, these restarts really have a, the potential to shuffle things. Because when you see a row take off, if anyone gets bottlenecks, and it looks like right now the inside groove is getting bottled up a little bit, if you allow a row to get that run, you wind up losing three, four spots in short order. Well, it's almost like the outside lane can stall the movement of the inside lane. If LeBay comes down and pinches the driver on the inside just a little bit, they lose their momentum. That picks up the momentum on the outside, so you can almost control the movement of the drivers on the inside. And the car on the inside, and we're watching it right now, Kevin Lacroix, he is going to get impatient at some point. He gets into the back of the 24, gets him a little bit sideways, they lose even more momentum.
play so far this season. Yeah, the back and forth and the battles between those two drivers have been fantastic to watch. And we still have numerous racers, Dave, who, who feel their title contenders, and who we feel are title contenders. But so far, it's been Ranger and Lacroix. Let's take a look at the 07 of Raphael Lasardi. Won his first ever race here at Autodrome Chaudière at the age of 12, racing a mini stock. It was called the Amateur Compact Sports Series. Started racing here at the tender age of 11. He's 17 now, about to turn 18, and he's turning some heads in the early going of this one. And he's raced all over this year. Arca Series, k &N Series, trucks. He's done it all, and now he's battling the inside of Donald Teach, who remembers the year that uh, Rafael Lassard was born. Donald Teach was racing super late models. He was in his late 30s. <laughs> steering wheel but like you say it's just a calm repetitive motion and John Fletcher a veteran crew chief in the NASCAR Pinty series is on top of his box and he's been coaching the driver of the 07 all the way through practice and qualifying caution now 37 goes around in turn number two didn't hit anything but the Castro 37 will get going in the right direction once again did a nice job to not get stuck in the grass. With the amount of rain we've had, you do not want to be in the grass and come to a stop with these slick race tires. Once again, under caution here in the Budweiser 300 LP Dubalé in control. Alex LeBay led for the opening 18 laps, but it's been all LP Dubalé for the remaining 62 as we get set to go back to green here at the Budweiser 300 on TSN. Dumoulin gets a nice launch at the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to be able to clear LeBay off turn two. Remember, LP Dumoulin thinks this place owes him one after last year. He lost the race on a late race restart, and he came into this one filled with confidence. He knew he was fast, and he has been fast pretty much all day long. Raphael Lassard up to that third position to the outside of Donald Teach. Andrew Ranger right behind him. Boy, did they lock out getting to restart in the outside lane. Now look at Andrew Ranger in the Mopar number 27. He is starting to go hunting up on the outside. Captain Highliner himself here at Autodrome Chaudière. He loves that extreme outside groove. of Kevin Lacroix. He just can't get back to the throttle because Donald Teach is right there. Battle for third, though. Teach to the inside of the 27 and give it to Andrew Ranger on the outside. Now three wide as Hathaway gets squeezed up on the outside. Has to really back out of it the Kubota number three. Ran out of racetrack in a hurry there. That was the wise choice. There was no happy ending to this situation. Where does he have to go? <laughs> That's a veteran save, too, to get out of it enough. If you lock up the brakes there, you're going to smack the wall. you got to slow down, get out of it, keep the car pointed so you don't knock the right front off of it. That was a fancy piece of driving by Jason Hathaway. Missed the wall by inches as we take a look at this battle for ninth place between the silver line number one of Anthony Simone. A little contact there and the 64 of Mark Dilley on board now with Simone. That could be a tire killer, that kind of contact. Either the right front of Simone or the left rear of Mark Dilley. There you see the 17 of DJ Kennington just in behind. He is down four laps after that earlier right front tire trouble. In these races, you get fairly quick yellows at the right time, and DJ Kennington can get back into contention. But it could be a long day. Remember, though, this is a break race, so we will stop at lap 150 or thereabouts, and the crews will get five minutes to work on their cars, make any adjustments needed. So any pit stop strategy is essentially out the window. You're absolutely right, and that's a great point, Dave. On board the 22 of 
Mark Antoine Cameron, you can see the body's already beaten up the fiberglass flick flapping on the nose of the 22. I was suggesting earlier, look at the sides of the tires. You don't need to. Look at the sides of the race cars. They're beat all the heck. Yeah, it's not taking long for them to get look battle weary, that's for sure. The 18 of Alex Tagliani. Again, that's not a battle for position as TJ Renamato in the 02 on the inside. He's lapsed down. And so is the 17 of DJ Kennington. As you look a little bit further back, there's the 46 of Brett Taylor. And problems now for the 64 of Dilly. And that is, because he's up right against the wall. You would think it's a flat tire. Caution. Right front. Caution is out here on lap 107. And yeah, it is right front down. So this is the second flat right front general tire that we've seen here today. Certainly can't blame the tires. I think most of what we're going to see is contact related as Dilly up against the wall. Rubs it a little bit off of two, but he's trying to get up out of the way. And this is the problem with getting a flat tire, though, trying to get the car up off the ground to get the jack underneath it. The crew does a good job, and they go to work repairing that right front tire. So Dilly will get out and try to avoid losing many, many laps. But you saw with DJ Kennington now four laps down, difficult to get out and remain on the lead lap. What a huge crowd. It, it, the people keep coming in, Dave. It's great to see for Marc Terrois and his team here at Chaudière. Back to green now on lap 114 to the, or 150 now as they cross the line here at the Budweiser 300. But Adam, you mentioned the crowd, this neck of the woods here in Quebec. They love their motorsports and they adore the NASCAR PT Series. Well, and you've got three drivers who this, this call this track their home track. Alex LeBay, Rafael Lassart, Donald Teach is less than an hour away, so they definitely have a hometown favorites, plus the likes of Andrew Ranger, Alex Tagliani, the Dumoulin brothers. So all of that Quebec for them to cheer for, that definitely helps. When Andrew Ranger won here last year, they, the crowd stayed in the grandstand for about half an hour afterwards while they interviewed him. They were just hanging on his every word. So Rafael Lazard up to the second spot in that 07. He doesn't want to get too bumper happy. That's his boss this weekend in the 47. He is racing a car prepared by Dumoulin competition. Big save by the three of Jason Hathaway's in a battle there with the Pi-A 22. Uh, Mark Antoine camera. A good crowd from the Pi-8 folks here in attendance here today. Their shop not too far away as well, but great to see that support for the it 22 team. If they pan the crowd again, look at the different shirts. There's clusters of fans with bumper-to-bumper uh, -bumper shirts on. There's clusters with GM Pie. Alex Tagliani making a little bumper tag down the back straightaway with Cameron. That's a battle for eighth position. Tagliani's team, as I mentioned, not happy after qualifying. They made big, big changes, at least three big changes. They wouldn't tell me exactly what they did, but Tyler Case's crew chief said we made three significant changes, and he said hopefully one of them works. Well, and let's, let's say this again. They only got 30 minutes of practice, 10 laps at a time, so not a lot of track time out there. And again, problems on the 17 of TJ Kennington, and again, it's a right front tire gone down on the Castrol Edge Dodge. This is a frustrating day for the veteran. Kennington as the caution flies once again. So Kennington will head to get a new right front. We'll head to take a break. LP Dumoulin continues to lead here at Chaudière. The famous green wall that surrounds Autodrome Chaudière has not been a factor here so far in the Budweiser 300 as we get set for the fifth restart with LP Dumoulin leading his teammate, Raphael Lassard. Almost an infamous green wall. It really is. It jumps out at you in a hurry as we've seen a couple drivers get close to it. So far, nobody into it. Coming off a of turn number four, Raphael Lassard going to lead his first lap in the NASCAR Pinty Series. How about that for the rookie up on the outside? He goes around your defending series champion in the WeatherTech number 47, Raphael Lassard. Look at the crowd. They're going crazy, Dave. There you see off the pace, the 37 of Simone Zion Vienne. No caution as we stay under green. And you're right, the crowd has absolutely erupted. Lazard out front, Dumoulin back to second. Then you've got Ranger working the outside of Alex LeBay for the third spot. 
Now it's just all a matter of hitting his marks. Again, we were looking at the forecast. The race to 150 has a lot of these drivers and teams expecting a sell of rain to come anytime after that halfway mark. So whoever wants to be at the front better make it happen now. Wow, close quarters racing between Teach and Hathaway. And we likely won't get a camera shot of it, Dave, but when we're in a valley, you can see a mountain across the valley. It is raining on that mountain. Like it's clear as day, it is raining over there. So Teach way up on the outside, half the way through the middle of the turn. You've got the number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron who we're riding on board with. He's way down low. It's another battle up towards the front of the field for third. Andrew Ranger slides it up on the outside. Alex LeBay in the Silver Wax 36 down low. And as we said, LeBay is committed to that yellow line. Andrew Ranger's committed to wherever that car will go up on the outside. <laughs> and they make contact. The Hotel Le Concorde, number 36, drifts up from the bottom and rubs the side of the Mopar Dodge. Uh, that just showed here clean racing, Dave. That's how you know you can't go any farther. Have a look at this battle, though. Some bad blood between these two drivers. It's a battle for 10th between Alex Tagliani and Jason White. A little bit of a history from last race. So far, they're giving each other plenty of ground. You can see the damage to the Rona Appipen Chevrolet just ahead of the number 21 of White. Now, Jason White this season should make his 100th career start. They're both veteran drivers. I've never seen White so pumped up about a race car as he has been about this number 21. He just thinks this is the fastest car he's ever, fastest Pinty Series car he's ever driven. He was behind the wheel of a sprint car on the West Coast last week. That would be pretty fun. And he's got a great crew chief in Larry Jackson, somebody who's turned a lot of laps in this series as well. And those two have really gelled. Mark Antoine Cameron into the 22 to the inside of the three of Jason Hathaway. Not able to put the throttle down. He will fall in behind the three machine. So now as you're nearing the halfway point, uh, 148 laps about to be ticked off. You can see those drivers who've been running the inside lane for most of those 148 laps. They're starting to get crossways. The car's not hooking up as well off the turns. Well, remember, with weather in the area, it's time to go. If they get to the break, when NASCAR calls the break and it pours down rain, this race would be official. So if you think you can pick up a spot, you've got to be up on the wheel hustling for all you've got. Leaders working around the lap car of Simone Dion Vienne. As we ride on board once again, Raphael Lassar. Sort of a wide 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock grip. That wheel comes to the same spot each and every time. You know, it's interesting when you talk to him. He runs for Kyle Busch down in the U.S. in the truck series, late model series as well. He says, when Kyle Busch speaks, you listen. So he learned a lot from him. 17 years old, but he's wise. NASCAR tells us the break will be coming up shortly. That's close. Lacroix on the inside of the 36 of Alex LeMay. Battle for fifth spot. Well, and speaking of two drivers with some history, these drivers do not particularly like each other. Yeah, of course, Alex LeMay ran a full season of Xfinity Series racing last year. And here is the halfway break caution flag. But LeMay rejoining the Pinty Series here for a full season in 2019. And Raphael Lassard leads the way. It's nice to see as he first caught the racing bug while watching the NASCAR Pinty Series race right here at Chaudière. We had a chance to talk to him earlier on this afternoon, Dave. Super pop. I, I started racing at 11 years old here, and that's where it all begins. So uh, I'm just super excited, and can thanks everyone at FRL Express, uh, Société Louis-Jacques, and everyone that support us. Lassard, your leader, as the cars come in for their midway service break. Tom? NASCAR officials give the signal. Now the teams are free to service the cars under this caution period. Fuel will go in first. The leader in his first NASCAR Pinty Series start, Rafael Lassard, liking his car. They're going to make a minor handling adjustment on the left rear. Also, the 47 of LP Dumoulin, who led a lot of laps early before giving way to that 07. Again, some minor changes, fuel, fresh tires, and we'll see how much of the rest of this race distance we can complete. 
It is a pretty tight pit road, but there's a lot of work being done. We'll be back to Autodrome Show the Air. Welcome back to Valley Junction, Quebec, about 65 kilometers outside of Quebec City in a quarter mile speed plant that's called Autodrome Chaudière. Just off the halfway break as we're looking to go back to green, the 07 of Raphael Lassard leading in his first ever NASCAR Pinty Series start. Slides up the racetrack just a little bit on LP2. And remember, full loads of fuel, fresh general tires on these race cars to start the second half of the race. Crews got a chance to inspect that tire wear as well, taking a look at how their setups are working and making necessary changes as they get set. The sunshine is out, though. Remember, the story here all day has been we're expecting a rainstorm. Now we get some sunshine, so that's going to heat the track and make things just a little bit different. You know, there's been so much to, to take care of in this race, so many things going on. A big tip of the hat to race director Rob Sharp in his first season. The dirt on the front windshield as we ride on board the 07 of Raphael Lassard. In the 24 uses all of that racetrack and a little bit of Alex LeBay to come off the corner. Gotta love the sounds of speed here at Autodrome Show the Air and look at how many cars have fixes to their bodies. You see Jason Hathaway with black tape on the nose. You got the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron with white tape. The 74 has orange tape. Everybody has some fiberglass fix. On a big oval like Jucasa Motor Speedway, you'll get donuts, is what they call them, on the side of a car, where a tire makes contact. You can see the perfect circle. At a place like Chaudière, it's just black streaks <laughs> all the way up the side of a car. Rubbing off the numbers of some of these cars is like, what? Trying to get that run on the inside of the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Jason Hathaway kind of taking inventory of things. He keeps peeking to the inside. I don't think he wants to make it three wide just yet, but he sure is getting a nice run up off the corner. Look who's fading, though, up on the outside. The 47 of LP Dumoulin, the WeatherTech Dodge. He was so strong through the first half of this race. He's up on the outside there, so maybe a change made that didn't work. Yeah, he is struggling up there, lost some valuable position. Like you mentioned earlier, this is the brake race, so nobody is going to be coming to pit road from this point on, at least not on purpose, unless something goes terribly wrong. Big gap at the front of the field. Is this a battle for second spot? Raphael Lassar nearly a full straightaway now. Ahead of this dice for second spot. There you see the white car fading into the distance as Kevin Lacroix and Andrew Ranger car around the 22 of Cameron. And the caution flag flies once again here in the Budweiser 300. And Cameron lost the lap. He didn't get going back in the right direction before Raphael Lassard came around. That will put him down a lap. Let's see what happened. He was near Simone Dion Vienne. Not sure if he had help or not. Now it looks like a little bit of contact there. We're right on board with the 22. You can, <laughs> That's yeah, contact. That's contact. <laughs> You can see by the tape on the hood that it has been a bump and grind kind of race. The crew having a look underneath that 22 for serious damage. Also a significant handling adjustment in the right rear. Well, if you're in the pits anyhow, you might as well take a big swing at the handling, Dave. Yeah, you have the opportunity to make some changes. One driver who needs no changes is that man, the 07, Raphael Lazard. He's in control. Welcome back to the third race of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series of Budweiser 300. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross up here in the boot. Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits as we go back to green. Raphael Lassard up on the outside is your race leader. What a savvy move. Raphael Lassard chose the outside. Andrew Ranger is in second. Ranger loves the high groove. So obviously a, a decision made by Raphael Lassard. John Fletcher and whoever else is working with them on the radio to say keep Ranger pinned to the bottom. Now you see the battle there for second on back. Ranger gets up to the outside and Lacroix again down low. But look at Hathaway in the Kubota number three. He really has turned things around and found some speed here this afternoon. 
Carrying a lot of speed on the outside, running a tighter outside groove than is Andrew Ranger. But, but Ranger is serving a purpose as well because Kevin Lacroix, even if he clears Hathaway, has nowhere to go. It's Donald Teach just in behind the bumper to bumper number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. The circuit Acura Chevrolet is looking very, very racy here today. Teach right up on the back bumper. Lacroix Ooh. contact between Lacroix and Hathaway on the straightaway. That's a tire cutter kind of contact, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, both cars lurch sideways after making contact. Here you see LeBay not too far behind. LP Dumoulin has settled down. Got back to that inside groove in the WeatherTech 47. Now battling with the silver line number one of Simone. And we've got problems on the 21 of Jason White. Went for a ride down the back straightaway. And you can see the tire is down on the right front corner. Let's have another look. We will ride on board with White. Just clipped the wall coming out of turn two and then smacked it hard. Yeah, he actually climbed up the wall just a little bit. The last hit was the one that did the most damage. White gets a new right front tire. The pace truck pulls in and will go back to green. Lassard and Ranger once again. And once again, Lassard chooses that outside group. He knows where Ranger is strongest. The eighth restart of the day. Just under 200 laps. And we've still got most of the cars that started this race are still out there on the racetrack, which shows you how durable these race cars are. Great shot from a robotic pan cam. Wow. And you see the one car hit the wall down the back straightaway and nearly tip over as Simone <laughs> knows exactly what's up. And he's going to go to the pits right away. That car is badly damaged. Clobbered the wall coming off a turn to a flat right rear tire, but I'm sure there are more problems than just that. Have a look. Oh, and almost collects the 47 of Dumoulin. Remember we watched Jason Hathaway in a similar situation. He was able to back out. I want to see if... T he ran out of racetrack, but he had to get out of there in order to get down to where Teach was running. Just a tough break for Simone. That's a significant hit, and there you can see the frustration written all over Anthony Simone. He is done for the day. Raphael Lazar continues to lead here at Autodrome Chaudière. He's just 17 years old, but he is racing like a veteran here in his first NASCAR Pinty Series start. Raphael Lazard leads the Budweiser 300, this time opting to start on the inside as we go back to green. It's almost as though they're more concerned about Andrew Ranger than they are about Kevin Lacroix or anyone else out there. But I, I love the strategy, the fact that, th that they're thinking that much about where they need to be, Dave. And now they have a veteran on the back bumper, and it is the bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge of Kevin Lacroix. You see how close he gets, nearly making contact. Well, and interestingly, they're almost all veterans compared to Rafael Lasarda, 17 years old. You look back through the field, almost everybody running in the top 10 has won one of our races or more in their career. Everyone with the exception of Simone Gianvien in 10 is a former winner. And, of course, Rafael Lazard in the lead. Should mention, too, it is starting to cloud over a little more. Whoa, big contact there between the Mopar Dodge of Ranger and the three of Jason Hathaway. Bottom ball covered here. Yep, stay, with, stay right on him. Inside, inside. On inside. Jeff Gutler encouraging Jason Hathaway to come and provide payback if necessary. But it's go time. The clouds are moving in. Oh, on the bottom here, 24 on top with you, still one inside. This version of payback is stay right with him. And now Hathaway goes to the inside. There's an opportunity there down low. No, there isn't it. The hole is plugged as they go almost three wide at times. Which is fun. There's still plenty of room for Hathaway to run that middle groove because LeBay is all the way to the bottom. Tight racing here as we're under 100 to go here in the Budweiser 300. And there you see it from high up above here at Autodrome Chaudier. Cars fanning out everywhere trying to find a groove that where their car works best. Holy moly, oh. Simone Dion Vienne sailed it into the corner. And that didn't stick. Dion Vienne goes around once again. Caution yet, gathers it back up. 
Chapman gets going, we stay green. Wow. Right in front of your race leader as Lassard goes to the outside. Again, Rob Sharp making some calls today, Dave. He's, he's the race director and figured some OG off the end is getting used to swinging that car back around. He can do it under green. He did it indeed. Now we've got this battle going once again. It's good that we didn't lose that battle, but here's what, to ha what happened to the 37 of Simulti on the end. And that was almost a defensive spin. He got in there too hot. He was gonna take out Alex Tagliani. The sportsmanlike thing to do was just take himself. Indeed, now the 36 with the 27. So Alex LeBay and Andrew Ranger as the other cars in that battle have broken away just a little bit. You see Hathaway with Donald Teach in the 24, just in behind the WeatherTech 47 LB Dumoulin. That's a battle for the fifth spot. Donald Teach gets down in front of Hathaway. Hathaway charging those corners, just not able to get any momentum up off the turn. Good view out of the front windshield. He's got nobody in front of him with lap cars. Raphael Lassard leads here at Valley Junction. Welcome back as we continue under green here in the Budweiser 300, race number three of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series schedule. Raphael Lassard is out in front, but there are battles all the way around this quarter mile speed plan. This is a battle for fifth. LP Dumoulin in the 47, Donald Teach in the Cirque Reactor at number 24 on the outside, and the Kubota number three of Jason Hathaway. He's got nowhere to go. He's just having to wait until things develop in front of him, Dave. And here we've got Alex LeBay running his line, Andrew Ranger running his line as they battle for third, and they barely even converge. Just that one spot coming off the corner. You can see both lines are equally as quick, and LeBay just can't quite get the drive he needs off the bottom in the Hotel Le Concorde, number 36. But I think he's... He's comfortable running where he is. Half the time, I don't think he's even trying to pass Ranger. He's just running his bottom line because that's where he's comfortable. Now, if Ranger makes one slip, he would pounce. Whoa, trouble. Big problem for the 21 of Jason White, who's in 14th position. This will draw the caution. You see a right rear tire has gone down on the powder excavating Dodge. Yeah, you can hear the right rear pop. And I mean this with all the respect in the world, nobody spins out as good as Jason White. <laughs> Smoke show, he always does it upright. Getting a report from the pits on the 17 of DJ Kennington. The problem with the two right front tires that were cut down, broken tie rod, earlier contact in the race. So they hope to have that one fixed up. As we go back to green, now with 31 laps left in this one. Rafael Lassard restarting on the inside. Kevin Lacroix has gotten a good run this first couple turns on the outside. There you see LeBay down low. He's hunting in third spot, looking for second. Ranger up high and two cars side by side and now going around. Dumoulin and Hathaway contact and both cars are destroyed. Wow, that is heavy damage and fluid just pouring out of that 47 machine. The other car involved, the 24 of Donald Teach. He caught it in the right rear, but there you see, I don't think Hathaway can see as he's trying to make his way back to the pits. Let's run on board with the driver, the three. Wow, and Donald Teach caught a big piece of that as Dumoulin noses into the pits. Look at the trail of fluid from the back of the WeatherTech, number 47. This one's going to lead to a lengthy cleanup as we are under caution here in the Budweiser 300. Welcome back to Autodrome Chaudière, and while NASCAR cleaned up the oil from the Dumoulin and Hathaway wreck, rain has moved in, and NASCAR has called the race as Raphael Lassard, in his first NASCAR start, has won the Budweiser 300. And you can see the view from where Raphael sits. That would have been a tough one to go back to green. Checkered flag waves, and it's official now. Lassard, your winner. Thank you, guys. Awesome job. Pumped up, there's John Fletcher getting congratulations from Don Thompson. Of course, he was the crew chief today. What a run for Rafael Lassard. Let's take a look at your top 10. You see Alex Tagliani recovering for fifth. Mark Dilley in the top 10. How about Brett Taylor, his best career NASCAR finish? Fantastic top 10, and Dion Vienne as well. Let's go down to victory lane, Todd. In his first ever NASCAR.
NASCAR Pinty Series race, Rafael Assard is a winner here at the Autodrome. Chaudier celebrating with the fans. A huge cheer as he holds that victory sign up and the smile on his face. They, they made... They made you work for it. Yeah. Lorraine, you had a hard battle out there with a lot of different cars, but you were a winner in race number one. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. I just can't thank my team enough. It's it's very hard to get like a one-off deal like this and be very competitive like this. So I just can't thank everyone at Zoomland Competition and uh, Société de my sponsor. And man, it's just awesome. I love this racetrack. And, it's just awesome to win in front of all my fans in Canada and my first NASCAR Pinty's race. Congratulations, Rafael Assar is a winner in his first ever Pinty Series event. Going pretty good is the understatement of the century. Let's take a look at your point standings now after three events. Still a one point lead, Kevin Lacroix up on top, Andrew Ranger a point back, and they've distanced themselves, Tagliani 20 points back in third. But it really is any one series at this point with a lot of racing left to go. There is the winner here today, posing for the photos. Today's race has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn, by the Concord Hotel in Quebec City, and by Honeygoo from Clean Flow, one honey of a lube. From the tight confines of Autodrome Chaudier as they celebrate on the podium to the tight confines of Exhibition Place next, Dave. It's the Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto for all of us here at TSN. We'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.